Hello again, Zippy John here. Um, I just figured I'd make a quick uh, DIY video. Um, I haven't made too many videos lately. Um, I've been doing a lot of live streaming. In case you're interested in that, I live stream on Tuesday nights at 6.30 p.m. with B. Wizzle on his channel. And on Friday nights, 6 p.m. Central, on my channel um but getting back to the video um i just wanted to show again show you this diy video uh i've gotten my first couple of batches of fry recently and i'm just wanted to make a breeder box um one to separate the female from the males um just to make it easier to keep track of how many fry are coming out and um, separate them because I've been getting them out and putting them in a separate Tupperware container um, and it's been difficult to find them all and obviously I want to optimize the amount of fry that survive because um, I do have live bears and they tend to eat their own babies. So um, it also gives it a, makes it a little easier for the female to have a little bit of privacy. Um, so um, if you guys are like me and can't really afford to just go to the store and get a separate breeder, breeder box, I am going to show you my way of making a breeder box to um, save you a little bit of money and use materials that you might have around the house. So I guess quick list disclaimer is one, um, you may not have these exact materials at your house. So I guess find something similar to it and use the materials and tools that fit accordingly. And second disclaimer is I will be using a lighter um, in this. So if you are seeing this video and you are under 18, please have parental supervision. I don't need anyone um, suing me because their child burnt down their house or burnt themselves or whatever it might be. A little bit of humor there for you, I guess. Um so what I did was I had these little half gallon containers um, that I got a while when I first started fish keeping. Um, so I figured I put these to good use. So all I did is very simple. Um, also I have I have um, the Tetra Whisper like internal filters that I had gotten. Um, so I'm just using the clip from the back of that and the suction cup so first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you have your hole um, lined up to the back of the container so that it's balanced out obviously you don't want want it tipping to one side inside the tank or falling off so i lined that up um, i used a measuring tape Pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory, but all I did was I took it from edge to edge. On here, it's seven and a half. So I marked my center line at three and three quarters. Okay, and the, or sorry, three and a quarter. Or yeah, yeah, three and three quarters. Okay, sorry for that mathematical error there. Okay, so then um, I marked the dot and I lined that up and then I took my pen and just made a little bit of a line, a light line right down marking, marking the outline. Okay, set that aside and then what I did was, now if you have easier materials i'm obviously going about this the hard way definitely not the most efficient way but you could use um a nail 
or a paper clip, which in my case, I used a paper clip and one of those clips, those bag clips, and I took one of the uh, metal sections off of that. So this is where the lighter and or candle, I think the candle might actually be better because you can leave it burning. But in my case, the lighter. And all I did was heated it up until it turned red hot. And then I just burned out the holes. And this part, obviously, since they're bigger holes, are a lot harder um, to do. But I just made a rotate, kept making a circle rotation, um, trying to burn it evenly until it fits in there. In my case, um, it's got these little beveled ends on it. So that part has to be able to fit through there. And then once it was in there, it was pretty snug and secure. Um, and then after that, uh, all I did was I took the, turned it over to the front and the key to this is, uh, at least if you want it to look sort of semi sort of professional, um, is I use a template. It, um, now this is a divider actually that would have went with this container so it came in really handy, but any kind of template. And I just laid it over. So that I would have at least some sort of even spacing. And again, I took my marker and marked all the way around, marked every hole. As you can see, I already have it done. Um, but then this way I didn't have to try to burn it and end up melting the plastic on, uh, on my template there. Uh, and again, I took my lighter, heated it up. And on this one, I actually used the paper clip more. Um, like I said, a nail would probably be easier. Um, it's a little bit wider and sturdier. But I just took every single marking and I stuck it in and just made a little bit of a circle so that it wouldn't melt to it and stick. Um, so key obviously is you want the hole um, wide enough that this uh, that you will get water to flow through once you stick it inside of the tank. Um, also, you don't want the holes too big to where the fry will either try to get out and get stuck in there or escape. So you want to keep them small enough to where they can't get out, but also um, make sure that you have enough water flow in there. Okay, so then I did the same likewise on both sides. And for that, I just took my same template as you can see, lined it up, marked them, and did the exact same thing on both sides. Now, um, another key to this is I had to make sure that the height was going to be set with that tank so that um, I wouldn't have too much water flowing up from the bottom in case I wanted to put any kind of substrate or anything on the bottom. I didn't want that gravel to be able to float up. So I left a little bit of a gap on the bottom and then also on the top, I didn't want it to overflow or, or anything like that. So that when I, um, when I had this set with the water line that the fish wouldn't be able to, um, get in or out. So there's obviously a few key little components to doing this right. It's not rocket science. It's just making sure that there's a few things that are not uh, that you absolutely have to do um, and then once the, all the holes were complete I took my hanger on the on the for the back here 
and hopefully I can get this in while I'm on camera here okay it's perfect it's just snug enough that it won't fall out but not so tight um, actually I I put a little bit of a crack in here um, pushing too hard earlier um, try not to do that however it really wasn't that big of a deal on this project in particular because there's going to be water going in and out of it anyway and it's going to be inside of the tank so it's not like it's going to leak everywhere and I'm going to lose all the water. Not a big deal and not so big that um, you know there's going to be any hole or anything in it. So um, pretty simple. Um, so now I'm just going to take this and stick it on the side front wherever however wherever it fits in your tank and this is this particular container is set right to the height it needs to be perfectly and i also put this suction cup on the bottom to hold everything straight up and down and give it that extra little bit of um security that i'm not worried about this thing tipping and um just falling into the tank um so again i know it's it's something very basic and i know that this isn't the most professional job that anyone's seen um but it does get the job done and if you're like me i wouldn't be able to keep fish if i didn't wasn't able to do little projects like this and this will help you from not being able to find your fry once they're in there and or from getting eating eaten and separating the female from the tank um if you like diy projects like this or in, or in just in general like watching my channel um please hit the like button you know maybe consider subscribing to my channel again don't forget about my live streams on Tuesdays and Fridays where we just like to have a little bit of fun and talk about a little bit of everything um, With that I guess I will see y'all in the next one peace